Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Um, back on these KMJ Assault Heads. I thought I'd do a video and try, I'll probably try linking these together showing you what I mean by porting them. The first thing I do is the valve job. Now this is a stock one, this one hasn't been cut yet. So it's a 202 and you got your three angles. This is what it looks like after I cut it, um, do a valve job. So it's got five angles. What I mean by that is you got this big top cut here and you got the seat here. And so that's one, two, three, four, and five. Five angles. Now, because it's cut out to the 208, you can see the step here. See that? I'm trying to get my pointer here and my lighting is not the best, but see that right there? It goes all the way around. This ledge here, that's because it cut out bigger. Hopefully that will alleviate, which it will alleviate that little divot here because it used to go in, then come and hit the seat. So now it's so far out, it's out of that spot. So whenever I go grinding, um, this will get blended in, of course, and make the throat bigger itself. But just thought I'd show you that. So it gets rid of that problem that we had before with the 202 or right behind the seat here, which I know the lighting sucks. Um, it would hit. So, but anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. Now there's a couple of things. Um, I forgot, totally forgot to mention this in the last video. So bear, so, so extremely sorry. But this Assault KMJ head, I forgot one other uh, head company sells this head underneath another name, and that's AFR. The AFR Enforcer head, it's the Chinese head, it's this head. The only difference is it has an 8 millimeter stem instead of 11 30 seconds for the valve, but everything else is the same. So I forgot to mention that, so that's pretty important too. But anyway, back to this. So the valve job's cut. Now, I want to do, I'm going to flow it just like this. So I'm going to cut it, i got to cut the exhaust still yet. But um, I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna flow it because I'm gonna show you guys because one of the people things people often say is don't cut them to larger valves, they flow less. And what happens is they took it to the local machine shop. They go, hey guys, I would like to put a 208 valve in it. And they probably don't have these aggressive um, top angle cuts as I do because this is from a custom cutter. Um, but they probably have a basic one and they cut it on there. And what it does is it still leaves this huge ridge here, and it's going to flow like crap. It probably will flow less right now, and I'm going to try to flow it after we get the valve job done and do nothing else just to show you. It's probably worse than what it was. But after it's done, it's definitely better. Now, also, just to give you an idea how aggressive that top cut is, when I'm cutting the valve job, you see the spots here, and then I'll go over here, and here. That's where the top, the cutter is actually hitting first before it comes down, so it's moving around. So that's my first thing. I thought I'd show you that. So... Hopefully it gives you some more information. I'll tie it into the next stuff. Hopefully the next video you see is me flowing it um, with no port work done, just the valve job. Promise you it's gonna be worse, but it'll be better later okay, on. Okay, maybe not. I want to show you this real quick. This is my valve seat and guide machine. It's up on the pilot. This is rubbing down. This is what I mean by it's hitting the, the chamber. I'm pointing to it right there. I'm gonna turn it on so you can see what I mean, but it's gonna start cutting down further into it. So just watch for a second, you'll see what I mean. See, hear it hitting. It's clearing itself. I took out a good portion of it already. See? See it taking the chamber out? That's what I mean by the cutters hitting that. Hey guys, one more thing I want to talk about before I actually flow the heads I want. Um, this, I just got done doing the valve job and I understand most of you don't probably have a Rottler seat and, seat, uh, seat and guide machine at your house that costs $30,000. Um, to do valve jobs, but I know several of you are like, well, how do I determine if I got a good valve job? Now, uh, I can show you how to make, get you some cheap ways to see if it's sealing up, um, but it might not tell you if it flows well, but I could tell you some easy ways real quick to tell if the valve job is sealing up. So if the heads are apart, what you can do is you can take some lapping compound like this. This is from Goodson. Now this is 600 grit, so super fine. This is what I use. Um, if you go to the parts store and you get um, lapping compound, you usually have a coarse one, which I don't know what grit that is, but super coarse. Then they got a finer one, which is um, still rougher than this by a bunch. But what you can do is you can take that and you put on your valve, and then you put your valve in here, and then you use your lapping stick. Which, by the way, there's some of these lapping sticks suck. They won't grip the valve, and then you just whirl it back and forth. You should pull it out and what you should see and you can kind of see here is that line right there from where the lapping compound has made contact now some people don't like to use valve lapping compound 
um, because they think it gets embedded into the seat, which it can if you don't clean well. I always try to clean well, and I'm also more anal about making sure things are proper. But you can also use toothpaste. Now that's one way. Now here's another way. This is a giveaway. So usually if it can, if it laps and you've got a perfect circle all the way around, usually you're going to seal up pretty good. But you always need to check this other one too, and this one's really simple. Put your head, get your head kind of level, and you take your valve. No seal in here or nothing. And you want to just get it like this and drop it. If the valve job's um, good, it, the valve should bounce up. So in other words, it'll go down and it'll bounce up and then back down again. If it goes down, just stops. The valve job's like crooked, like sideways, where it's just not right. So let me show you. So this should be right. So you hear it bounce. Hear that? That's all you do. You want it to bounce. If it's not bouncing, it's because the seat's like crooked, hitting like this, and the valve's trying to hit flat, so it wedges itself in. So if you can get it to lap and it bounces, typically it's going to seal up. So there's a little tip for you too. So there you go. Now, of course, you can always do the vacuum tester like I do. Now, some of you are like, well, I don't have this machine that has a vacuum tester. Okay, also at Harbor Freight, they sell vacuum testers for like bleeding brakes and stuff. All you have to do is take the pad, you put it on here, you put your valve on, actually I should be in this hole, and then you suck and it'll pull some vacuum and then you wait a second and see if any of it's dropped and then you also know if it's good. So just a helpful hint for you. Okay, fellas, just got it off the flow bench. Kind of surprised me a little bit. So let me recap what we got here. See, this is cylinder one. This would be our baseline one. This is exactly how the KMJ head flowed stock, just showing you. Um, all I did on this one is I just showed you I cut the valve job, to a 208 and I redid the 1600 um, valve job to a better radius one that I used. Now what shocks me, and this is by the way is the difference, so we can see how much flow it gains or lost. So if we look here, um, you know, it didn't really make a difference between one and 200, it didn't really do much. At um, 300 thousandths, let me pan back a little bit here, it lost, looks like 11. Then it loses five, then it starts really gaining. It gained six. And this one's what really shocked me. It gained 27 CFM at, looks like 600 valve lift. That's a huge gain. And all I did was just put, cut the larger valve job, uh, larger intake valve diameter. And of course, um, it's got my own special valve cut on it. So now it's flowing 274 CFM. I actually thought it was gonna lose everywhere. But, I mean, there's only a few spots where it actually gained, at least on the intake side. If we look at the exhaust and its difference, sorry, I'm paying out a little bit here for you. Um, it's pretty much about the same. This number here, I think I made a mistake whenever I was doing it. So ignore that 100 lift. Um, but the rest, I mean, it's down, which is normal. And there's no port work done. I kind of figured this was gonna happen anyway. I didn't figure that would happen. Anyway. Hope you enjoyed that. So valve job, if someone says, well, you cut out a valve, uh, larger valve, it's gonna hurt flow. Uh, most places, yes, but the peak it helped. But we'll talk about how we're gonna do some more work in the next video or so. Thanks.